Hi, my name is Seth Kligerman, and we're going to be talking about acute lung injury and organizing pneumonia. Yeah. It's important to remember that organizing pneumonia is an extraordinarily common response. Uh, this is the only self-promotional do during this talk. This is a paper we wrote, um, which is probably the best paper I've ever written uh, regarding um, lung injury and how it progresses and how it resolves or may progress to fibrosis. And organizing pneumonia, the legacy term is bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia. And it usually resolves, but as surprisingly or not surprisingly, depending on how much lung imaging, imaging you do, about 15% of people will develop some degree of fibrosis from organizing pneumonia. So it's important to remember the normal histology and how uh, delicate and, and really beautiful the uh, histology of the normal alveolar wall is. We have our type 1 pneumocytes, uh, which provide a mechanism of oxygen ex and gas exchange with the uh, underlying capillaries. And then we have our type 2 pneumocytes, which are uh, the cells that are not only the progenitor cells and repopulate the type 1 pneumocytes, but act as macrophages um, and really are the protectors of the alveolus. Um, so if we look at this under electron microscopy, you can see that uh, the type 1 pneumocytes and the capillary endothelium or the capillary forms this very intricate, um, very fragile unit, which allows for basic oxygen exchange and gas exchange. And when you look at this unit even closer under the electron microscopy, you see that the uh, wall of the type 1 pneumocyte and endothelium, uh, which is basically just two cell, thick, uh, cell layers thick, they're actually fused by a shared base of membrane and allows for the oxygen exchange. And this is a very fragile unit, but allows for us to uh, basically survive. And this can be damaged both from the external environment, which is basically the alveolus and the type 1 pneumocyte, or the internal environments, like if someone has sepsis and other circulating inflammatory um, matter. So what happens? So when the basement membrane is injured, you get you know exudation and coagulation of plasma proteins through the basement membrane tear that kind of pour from the capillary side into the uh, alveolus. That's followed by fibroblasts and fibrin, which migrate, migrate into the alveoli. And the fibroblasts can undergo various forms of differentiation. Uh, and then also that basement membrane, because it's basically flopping in the wind, will start to infold and you'll get some partial alveolar collapse. And this is beautifully shown in multiple electron microscopy studies. And that these organizing plugs of fibrin and fibroblasts and myofibroblasts and other debris um, for these form these organized balls within the uh, alveolus, and those organized balls are called organizing pneumonia. And these balls of organizing pneumonia are extremely common in various forms of lung injury. Uh, this includes patients with classic organizing pneumonia. You can see the peribronchiolar consolidation. You can see these pale myxoid plugs of organizing pneumonia in the alveoli. Additionally, we have acute fibrinous and organizing pneumonia, which is kind of this intermediate lesion between uh, organizing pneumonia and diffuse alveolar damage. And you still have these plugs of tissue, but here there's a lot more fibrin. And because there's a lot more fibrin, it's a lot more uh, pink looking on pathology, and it tends to be a little bit more severe injury. Even with uh, diffuse alveolar damage, you have organization. So that material that pours out and all that cell death that we see in DAD, which we're going to talk about, organizes into these organizing plugs. And um, I've had many a pathologist call me and say, hey, is this you know organizing pneumonia a really bad case, or is this the organizing phase of diffuse alveolar damage? Because they look almost identical when they get to this level at this point. And as the radiologist, we look at it and say, hey, this is a really severe injury. Um, this is going to be uh, diffuse alveolar damage. So the acute and subacute lung injuries really uh, represent a spectrum. Um, from organizing pneumonia to AFOP and diffuse alveolar damage. I'll look at, let you look at this to review um, the lo localization, the degree of injury, but it, it really is. They can be very similar based on, Im on imaging and also on pathology. And again, the main difference between these really is pathologically what has happened to that basement membrane. Um, you know, and this was a beautiful study done with reovirus and mice showing that the major difference in developing DAD versus OP was the degree of injury to the basement membrane, the particles that caused the injury, how many were there, how well were they cleared, and what was the body's response to those injury. And they did genetic changes on mice and found that certain mice, depending on the genes that were altered, had more severe injury than other ones. And again, mild to moderate OP extensive DAD and AFOP is somewhere in the middle. 
Rising pneumonia is an extremely common response to injury. We see it in various infections, inhalational injuries, drug reaction, collagen vascular disease. Only when it's idiopathic do we call it COP or cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, but almost all cases have a known cause. We also see this on the edges of granulomas and in infections, even the edges of malignancy. So you got to be careful if you get a biopsy of OP to make sure you're not bi biopsying the edge of a malignancy six cases of organizing pneumonia and you'll see that even though the causes are all different the imaging looks very similar and that's because the same portion of the lung is usually injured and we see various patterns ranging from peribronchiolar consolidation subpleural consolidation subpleural sparing perilobular patterns reverse halo signs and we're going to go into each of these and why they develop pneumonia so we have focal patterns and diffuse patterns uh, focal patterns are uh, less common, um, and here we see, you know, organizing pneumonia is first dis uh, discussed in non-resolving pneumococcal pneumonia. And this was actually a patient with non-resolving pneumococcal pneumonia who do ha did have organizing pneumonia, um, and you know, I think even in the if this patient did have resolving pneumonia, and even if you biopsy this during the healing healing phase, you would see this is a MOVAD state, and you would see these uh, green areas of organizing pneumonia, because again, this is a common response to that injury, which is going to happen uh, in cases of pneumonia. Um, Here's a patient with a pet, you know, a nodule that was biopsy thought to be malignancy. You can see the areas of organizing pneumonia. But remember, organizing pneumonia can occur along the edge of, of malignancy. So you got to be very careful. This patient, they actually did find uh, coxy here. So this was a coccidiomycosis infection. Uh, more commonly, we see the diffuse patterns. And from those, we have um, the nodular pattern or the consolidated pattern. I'm uh, just going to talk briefly about the micronodular pattern, and usually it's a central lobular nodular pattern, and this really depends on particle deposition. Remember, most of these um, are either coming from the air or blood. A lot of these come from the air side, and if you have a patterns of injury we see are really dependent on the size of the particles, uh, the number of particles that are inhaled or come through the bloodstream, or the clear and the clearance of particles. Um, now we don't have time to talk about all those, but you know, let's say we have a particle that's of a certain size that's really going to lodge around the respiratory bronchioles, and you're going to wind up with, in this case, kind of a, a central lobular nodular pattern. And you can so here's a patient with a volley that was initially thought to have IV talcosis or incipient lung disease from injecting uh, pain medication because of this diffuse central lobular nodularity, not typical for infection. But the patient denied that, had uh, been vaping. And you can imagine these particles associated with the vaping must be of the perfect size of where they lodge around the respiratory bronchioles. Here you can see the associated path slide just showing this very exquisite organizing pneumonia just centered around the airways. Um, and you know this was a pattern we saw in about 5% of cases of patients with Evoli. Uh, not the most common pattern, but again, uh, it's dependent on the particle size. Now more commonly, we have smaller particles that are either deposited by the airway or the blood. And those will, even though they do extend somewhat diffusely throughout the alveolus, um, they do tend to be peribronchiolar still. Um, this is a very nicely done paper uh, by Katzenstein and Meyer showing that um, even these patients with uh, what looked like relatively diffuse imaging, that when you looked at it, the damage was most severe in the peribronchiolar uh, portion of the alveolus. And we can see that with this case. Here's a case that looks like diffuse consolidation. Yeah, there's subpleural sparing. This is a looks like a diffuse lung injury. Patient underwent biopsy. You can see a little biopsy here. And even on low power, what you can notice is, yeah, the injury is bad. But when you look at it, look at these areas that where it's more severe. Here it's more severe. Here, here it's more severe. Here it's more severe. When you blow up on the areas you noticed what are those what is it most severe around it's more severe most severe around these this respiratory epithelium these are the respiratory bronchioles so even though this is a diffuse injury or looks relatively diffuse on uh ct and even though it looks relatively diffuse on path there really is more severe injury surrounding the peribronchiolar uh portion of the alveolus and the periphery is less involved and we further we see that there's all these plugs of organizing pneumonia there's a lot of inflammatory cells and there's some fibrosis here as well which you know some degree of of nsip uh which i will talk about maybe later and then here's another portion of the lung completely portion again most severe around the respiratory bronchioles uh, with the periphery of the lung uh, less involved compared to the areas around the airway 
various patterns of uh, the diffuse form of organizing ammonia. Some are really diffuse, like the last case I showed you, but a lot of them are peribronchiolar and peripheral, uh, perilobular patterns uh, with septal thickening, uh, which can be secondary to septal uh, inflammation, uh, edema, or fibrosis. The halo or reverse, uh, sorry, reverse halo or atoll sign uh, are common, as is subpleural sparing. Three examples of common patterns we see, uh, the one on the left due to nivolumab, very peribronchiolar, uh, another one with a bone marrow transplant patient with infection, very peribronchiolar, and then here's a patient with COVID with uh, subpleural consolidation, uh, maybe reverse halo sign, and uh, these are often intermixed. Here's another Another common pattern uh, we often see intermixed with the subpleural sparing is the perilobular pattern, where we have these uh, focally spared lobules. And what this represents on pathology is really the zonal nature of this injury, where you'll have one lobule which is severely injured with all these plugs of organizing pneumonia. Here is actually a fibrotic pink septum, and the next secondary lobule right next door is completely normal. And then subpleural sparing, why do we see this? Here's a patient with AFOP with subpleural sparing. Well, we're not entirely sure. Uh, I would imagine since uh, the lymphatics and our other mechanisms of clearance uh, are centered in the not only the periphery of the lobule, but periphery of the lung, that this properly represents a mechanism of clearance. Now here's a 53-year-old man with COVID, um, and you can see what happens to his lungs in about uh, two weeks. Um, extensive consolidation. Airways are dilated. I don't want to call this bronchiectasis, yes, but because this is reversible, believe it or not, and then has pneumomediastinum. Um, and this is a patient with diffuse alpha damage. So diffuse alveolar damage has an acute phase where you get highly membranes, which are basically a surfactant and other material from pneumocyte death because it's such a severe injury. You have edema uh, and it's diffuse alveolar damage because it's diffuse across the alveolar wall. Um, and then the injury organizes just like we uh, see with organizing pneumonia. Um, the highly memories resolve and that material made up of all the components of the stuff that's exudated as well as uh, portions of the dead cells start to organize into this material. And uh, these look like organizing plugs. And as I said before, many pathologists have called me wanting to know, is this a bad case of OP or DAD? Because it can look very, very similar. Alveolar collapse is an extremely common finding. We see, can see the dramatic volume loss that occurs within a short period of time in this patient. And here's what was an al open alveolus. It's just completely collapsed down due to the uh, surrounding injury. Here's another patient with COVID with uh, ground glass, kind of lower low predominant, crazy paving pattern in some areas, some peribronchiolar consolidation, lobular sparing, some areas of subpleural sparing, it's dramatic volume loss, airways start to pull open. I do not call this bronchiectasis because a lot of this is reversible. Um, now here's the patient a few weeks later and look at these alveoli. They're literally being pulled open because of the surrounding collapse and surrounding lung injury. Look at them all over this place. And unfortunately this patient uh, passed away. So how does, you know, what has happens once this happens? Well, you know, two things, either it's repaired or it's not. And if it's repaired, things kind of recover and turn back to. So what happens? Well, the lung repairs itself. The lung is very resilient. So here we have this peribronchiolar consolidation areas of peribronchiolar ground glass. This is all five lobes. You can see the airways. Look at this, the airways dilating. And then the body starts to remove those plugs of OP. The basement membrane is repaired. The pneumocytes, or type one pneumocytes are repopulated by the two, type two pneumocytes. The alveoli re-expand. Look at that airway. That airway return normal in size. That's why I don't call this bronchiectasis. Here's another example. Here's a patient with COVID. Three months later, you would never know he had any sort of infection. Uh, look at this beautiful peribronchiolar consolidation with this organizing pneumonia pattern. And to talk about the reverse halo sign. So the reverse halo sign is uh, probably a sign of clearance. Here's a patient with eosinophilic, chronic eosinophilic pneumonia. All chronic eosinophilic pneumonia is, is organizing pneumonia with eosinophils. So the eosinophils are causing the lung injury, which leads to the organizing pneumonia, but I, I digress. It's not the point of this. But we see here where these nodule were in the areas of nodular consolidation, we start to see these reverse halo signs. Here's another example. Even diffuse alveolar damage heals. Look at the airway uh, decreasing in size as the lung injury and the alveolar collapse resolves. There is some permanent fibrosis here, but uh, the injury has, has dramatically improved. 
So what happens when the repair is dysregulated, those organizing plugs are not uh, cleaned out, the base of membrane damage is too severe, fibroblast deposits, collagen is laid down, well, you wind up with permanent fibrosis. And we can see that in cases of organizing pneumonia. Remember, 15% of cases of OP uh, progress to fibrosis. Here's a patient with multiple areas of peribronchiolar consolidation. Here's nine months later. Uh, there are these permanent areas of fibrosis. A lot of the areas are better, but some areas have uh, you know, resulted in permanent fibrosis. We see that. Another patient with uh, fibrosis secondary to organizing pneumonia. This patient had nivolumab toxicity. You can see the peribronchiolar, dramatic peribronchiolar consolidation. The airways are pulled open even in the cases of organizing pneumonia. And that consolidation starts to dissipate. And But you're left, you know, the repair process was incomplete. A lot of these areas, you know, here's clear fibrosis, but even these other areas where, you know, there's some mild architectural distortion, there is some residual fibrosis. And even AFOP, I showed you that case of AFOP. Again, this is a severe injury, and here it is a few months later. And you can see, uh, again, subpleural sparing, as we show with the initial injury, but here is the areas of architectural distortion due to fibrosis. And, um, you know, I don't want to spend too much talking about the relationship between organizing pneumonia and nonspecific interstitial pneumonia. I think most cases of NSIP are probably caused by organizing pneumonia, but that's debatable. But here's that case I showed you before, and here is the uh, patient four months later. And if I think if anybody in the world uh, who's a chest radiologist was given this uh, image, they would call this NSIP, and this was NSIP on biopsy. And here's a patient I thought had uh, usual interstitial pneumonia, uh, potentially IPF. Uh, and here was the CT scan. And, and, you know, a little bit atypical. Some areas, uh, base is a little bit less involved. But, you know, what else would you call it? You're not going to call this NSIP. It doesn't look like NSIP. Uh, and then here's the patient uh, two months before. And then here's the patient a month before that. This patient had completely normal lungs back in February and then had diffuse alveolar damage and then healed with what would kind of fit into that UIP pattern. Now we see lots of various patterns of healing with diffuse alveolar damage, uh, but this is just one that kind of fooled me. So conclusion, organizing pneumonia, AFOP and DAD represent a spectrum of lung injury. The injury findings are not related, uh, only, are not only related to the degree of injury, but also particle size, clearance and the body's response. Uh, many people with organizing pneumonia will heal without significant fibrosis, but um, fibrosis is common with these lung injuries and it's not surprising to see them in various patterns as we discussed. So thank you.